hey, how's everybody doing? I pray that you are doing well and that you are constantly pursuing Jesus Christ. You are constantly seeking after his kingdom, studying his word, pursuing him, living a life of sanctification. I, I come to you today with a uh, a message, you know, uh, anybody who is subscribed to this channel for any length of time realizes that, um, you know, we, we speak about things that most, that most uh, churches won't speak about. Hard, hard issues and heart issues. You know, I want to address many things that the modern church has not only bought into, but in order to keep their parishioners, they, they've been selling them a, a line of goods that just is not biblical. I want to discuss heaven and hell. Heaven and hell are real, literal places. You can receive the glory, the blessing, the place in which Jesus Christ went to prepare for you by fully accepting him, believing in him, trusting in him, and allowing him to not only be part of you, but also work through your life to sanctify you. Or you can choose to denounce Christ, not accept Christ, or just live outside of a biblical lifestyle and you can go to hell. And that's just the honest truth. You know, many churches these days have been saying, it's, oh, it's okay, you know, you, you, you said your prayer one time and you're, and you're good. You can live any way you want, you know. Living that lifestyle is fine, you know. Jesus loves and forgives everybody. Well, of course he does. Absolutely he does. But you must understand something. Once you ask for forgiveness, you walk away from that. So say you were in a uh, lifestyle that we call an alternative lifestyle, but... In the eyes of God, it's a demonic lifestyle. And that's just the truth. Once you ask for forgiveness, you're to walk away. And I know that there's, at times, people stumble and they, they get drawn back in. But the idea is that we leave it behind. We leave behind sin. We do not continue to embrace sin. We definitely do not call sin okay. We do not call it right or we do not call it good and even in the church we've been embracing this notion that evil is good and that good is evil and we know that it's completely anti-christ and anti-biblical in nature you know i i have been called to send a warning about the times and events that not only we are going through but also the season in which we live in the fabric of reality is unraveling before our very eyes and yet very few very few within the body of Christ frankly don't care in matter of fact when I bring these things up sometimes I'm actually met with resistance of all things if you could believe that it's like the believer doesn't believe it's like the follower does not follow the one who's supposed to have faith has no faith at all you know our society has been weaving a web of lies and deception so thick that even the very elect are being deceived and misled once saved, always saved. 
Friends, I'm here to tell you that is not biblical. As much as you'd like to believe it, it is not biblical. Time and time again throughout Scripture, it is very clear. And over and over again, how many times it is, it is hammered home that we must live a sanctified life, a pure life. It even goes on to name multiple things that we are not to do or not to pursue or not to be involved in. And again, if you find yourself in a situation that you may have slipped back into a temptation or you have not fully dealt with whatever you're dealing with, of course, there's grace, there's forgiveness, but you must ask, you must seek repentance, and you must walk away from that in which is entangling you. And again, if you stumble, you get up again, and you run into the arms of Jesus Christ. And if you stumble, you you ask for forgiveness. You will be you will be free from it. But you must continue on. You cannot. Go into that sin, go into that lifestyle, go into that whatever you're into and accept that it is okay or accept that it is right or accept that God is okay with it. I hope what I'm saying makes sense. We are standing at the threshold of eternity and yet Many Christians, many believers, many who call themselves believers have got their head in the sand. Or they are refusing. It's not even the fact that their head's in the sand. They're actually fighting against those trying to set forth a method, message. Which is, you know, quite frankly, I, it, it's, as heartbreaking as it is, it's actually fine with me because it's fulfilling scripture. Which just leads me to believe that we are that much closer to the appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ which I want. I am longing to see him. I am longing for him to call me up to him, to be caught up with him, to be rescued by him. I long for that, and I anticipate that. I search for that, and I want that oh so desperately. And I am not only flabbergasted, I am shocked and heartbroken. There are so many, so many within the body of Christ that it's like they don't want this. They don't want their Savior. They don't want the Redeemer. They don't want the lover of their soul. They don't want the bridegroom to come and, and to take them, to, ki to carry them away to a place that is a million times better than what we have here on earth. And that is, that is I'm, just, I'm just throwing out a number. A billion times better. I mean, why do we hold on as Christ followers so much to this earth, to this planet, to what we have here? Why do we live in such fear? Why are we embracing fear? We don't embrace Jesus Christ. We embrace fear. Matter of fact, it says that we are not to fear. The perfect love of of Abba Father, the perfect love of Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit casts out all fear. Why are you in fear? Are you living outside of a biblical relationship, not only in your current life, but also when it comes to Christ? You see, Jesus Christ calls us. He calls us by name. He wants us to be close to Him. He wants us to embrace Him, but yet we are too, too busy embracing self, embracing goods of this earth, where Christ himself said, hey, look, do not store up treasures on earth, but store up treasures in heaven. But yet, even as Christ followers, we store up treasures on earth. When we read through the scripture, it tells us forbatim the things we are to watch out for. It tells us forbatim the things we are not to do, but yet... We do them and we say it's okay. We do them, we say, oh, I said a prayer 40 years ago and I can do whatever I want. And that is not true. That is not the case. There are many who believe they're within the body of Christ who are going to hell. 
And that is just the simple, blunt facts. But there is hope. The hope is run after, chase after, pursue Jesus Christ right now. For the believer and unbeliever. For if you do not know Jesus Christ, he has made a way for you to escape hell. Much less the tribulation that will soon come when the rapture of the church happens and those who are seeking and longing and waiting for Jesus Christ to appear to take them home. Those are just the hard facts, and yet there are so many within the body of Christ that fights this, and I'm just, I'm perplexed. It's like, did you not even believe the scripture which they say they believe in, but yet they don't believe it? It's like, I, I, I'm confused. I don't understand. People, Listen, Jesus Christ loves you. He wants you to live a pure life. He wants you to live a sanctified life. He has made a way for you. Abba, Father, made a way for you. That's why he sent Jesus Christ. Listen, please hear these words. Repentance is a gift. We do not have a free pass to sin. Please understand this. But yet, because we are living in a fallen world, that the evil is so oppressive on this planet, sometimes we mess up, sometimes we fall, sometimes we stumble. God gave us a way to be reconciled with him instantly. We've already been bought by his blood. Understand that. But I challenge you to study through the scriptures about when you are a Christ follower and you fall away. What is the penalty? What is the punishment? It's like people do not want to either read these portions of scripture or they ignore these portions of scripture or they believe these portions of scripture not to be true. Because I can't figure out what else it could be. Listen, heaven and hell are very real. There are many within the body of Christ who believe they're within the body of Christ who are going to hell. Because it's not only their actions, but of unforgiveness, of unrepentance. And literally, just following the enemy and whatever he tells them to do. These are people within the church. Guys, it is so important that we pursue Jesus Christ 100% of the time. Our Savior is calling us by name. He is coming soon. He'll be appearing in the clouds to take us home. And some don't want that. I am shocked why they don't want Why don't you want that? Why don't you want that? But there will be many who will not answer the call. There will be many who will not go. There will be many who end up in hell. Those who call themselves believers and those who do not know Jesus Christ. So, please, everybody from the sound of my voice, if you are a follower of Christ, please recommit your life to him today. Call out to him. Ask for forgiveness. Repent for the life you've been living. Repent. And if you do not know Jesus Christ, he loves you. He does not want even one to perish. He does not want even one to go to hell. Please understand this. He has made a way for you, an easy way of just accepting Him, trusting Him, believing in Him. Guys, please understand this. Study this. He's at the door. Eternity is unraveling before our eyes. We are at the precipice of time. Will you enter into His kingdom? Or will you enter into the most horrific, terrible place that exists? The choice is yours. The choice is yours. Will you choose Jesus Christ, love, peace, and patience, and kindness forever and ever and ever, or will you choose hell? It's up to you. Have a blessed day, guys. Bye-bye.